Hey, Nathan. I noticed that Argyle's getting pretty good reviews. They're saying it's the best film of the year. Who's saying that? Sh- t- show me one person that said that. Well, I, I, see, look, it says hilarious and slick and thrilling. Yeah, you're hilarious. Now, have you ever considered being a comedian? Maybe. <laughs> Welcome back to the Real Talk Podcast, episode 124. I'm your host, Nathan, and I'm joined by the man himself, Matthew Nevis, to my left. Thank you, thank you. Today, we are going to be discussing stand-up comedians that transitioned into film. There's yeah. been a lot of them over the history of time. I feel like it's a harder transition nowadays than it was before. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about that a little bit, talk about who did it the best, and yes. some guys that struggled to do it. Yeah, it's it's been more. I don't know why, but I, I I think we wanted to discuss this because of the fact that a lot of stand up comedians, what they have in common as well, is uh, podcasts. Yeah, which we have podcasts too. We talk about film, but we we see like the most infamous being Joe Rogan. Yeah, you know, and and, and the the podcast verse that has spawned from, yeah. from Joe Rogan, like you know He's, Tom Segura, yeah, and, uh, Bert Kreischer. And uh, a few others that are like in his sector of like L.A., Texas, uh, New York comedians. They all Theo Vaughn. Yeah, Theo Vaughn too. It's it's almost like their own uh, Marvel, their own cinematic universe. They of really comedians. do have. There is a Joe Rogan verse. <laughs> I think they use that term a lot now. Joe right? Rogan verse is like a real thing. <laughs> Fucking weird, but I get it. The man makes money. He's got a two hundred and fifty million dollar Spotify deal up his back. Yeah, uh, on his back. So it's like I don't blame him, but. Again, he he was one of the few comedians that tried to transition into movies and gave up. And that's another thing, too, from a lot of these people, is that a lot of these comedians, they try to go into film, and it's not as easy as it seems. Yeah, a lot of them start with the the sitcom route. Like, yes. Joe, like Joe Rogan did... Um, news Radio. News Radio, yeah. Yeah, it was and great. And he pretty good on News Radio. Really like, good, I, I yeah. actually did watch News Radio a bit growing up, and, and mm-hmm. I did like it. Yeah, same. I, I, I mean, keep in mind, it, it was similar to like a King of Queens with Kevin uh, James, yes. where it's like... He was good, but News Raider had Phil Hartman, Dave Foley, oh, like a yeah. lot of funny people. So you get a little help that way. But he was good in it. Yeah, but as far as movies, was Joe Rogan in it? Like- small things like he was in, uh, what was it? Here Comes the Boom. He was in small, oh, right. like, you Stuff know, like roles like that where he's like the the evil boyfriend or the dude bro right. type of thing, which got, coming from him, yeah. But I mean, recently we've seen Burt Kreischer really try. Oh, <laughs> yeah. To break into the into the mainstream film space with mm. uh, his film The Machine. The Machine. Which I don't know how the fuck he got uh, <laughs> Mark Hamill <laughs> to play his dad. To play his dad. But I also don't know how fucking Sebastian Maniscalco. <laughs> Got Robert De Niro to play his dad. <laughs> Sebastian, know. in all fairness, Sebastian Maniscalco, <laughs> he gave a good performance in The Irishman. Yeah. He probably talked to De Niro yeah. and was like, hey, De Niro, could you be in my uh, little shitty comedy? And it's like, sure, whatever. <laughs> Burt Kreischer, I don't know how the fuck he got Luke Skywalker to play his dad. Honestly. But sure. Both why of not? those, both of those fucking blow my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it says a lot about what's going on nowadays. Oh man. But um yeah, it's a weird time. I thought it was an appropriate time. We thought it was an appropriate time to talk about this topic. Exactly. Those films uh, came out recently as well as Bill Burr's directed film uh, Old Dads. Oh, I, I think didn't it was. see that. Yeah, neither did I. It, it kind of looked like uh, Bill Burr's uh, leftover jokes that he didn't put in a stand-up. Right. And he was like, I'll just put it in a movie. And it's like, no, it's, it's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same. Um, it's different, though. It's like these comedians now are trying that format and I don't remember comedians in the 80s or 90s doing that. No. They were in much better films than those. <laughs> what do you, why do you think that is? Do you think it's just like uh, comedians care less about breaking in traditional media because they have these outlets like podcasts where they can make their own money from? Was it before like that was the only route? Like from stand-up, you could become an actor Mm-hmm. And now you could just become a podcaster and do yeah. your own shows and be nobody's boss. And I understand it. Like you don't yeah. have to work on set for 12 hours a day and shit mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. I understand it. But you think that's the main thing or? It might be a little bit of that. Also, maybe it's just like movies nowadays aren't making those movies anymore. Like I can't picture like a Jim Carrey in um what what's uh fucking, what's the, 
I, I am com- going completely blank on the movie where Liar 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 like yeah. a movie like Liar Liar I can't picture like Tom Segura being in a movie like that no even though he's been like the f- movie dad yeah in a, in a couple examples I just yeah. like I just don't see him in that because he just doesn't have that kind of charisma you're right but those kind of films are being made less like the, there's kind of the, you know it's there like the death of the mid-budget film I feel like now yeah. it's harder with no DVD sales and stuff like that mm-hmm but in terms of examples, I'm reading it right now, and you have four people on this list uh, going into Def Jam comedians. Uh, let's go into these big these in guys. In the '90s, Def Jam com- Def Jam was. I mean, I love watching OG Def Jam specials yeah, and seeing you know young Chris Tucker do yeah. a spit about roaches in his house, and the roaches used to fight him and shit. <laughs> and uh, Martin Lawrence uh, mm-hmm. coming out in his underwear, doing these wild jokes. Uh, Bernie Mac yes. coming out with this legendary set where he's like, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. <laughs> you ever seen that yes, set? Man. The story behind that set is the guy before him bombed. <gasps> oh, fuck. And the crowd, like Def Jam crowds yeah. are historically like, if you're shit, they're, they're not even going to let you tell a joke. Yeah, you're not going to survive. So the guy before him gets cooked Ooh. and he comes out like, I'm not scared yeah. of you motherfuckers. And he keeps repeating it. It's like, it's one of the most legendary sets of all time. But anyway, these guys try and just transition beautifully into film. Martin Lawrence yeah. in the 90s with um, Bad Boys. Bad Boys, and, yeah. And uh, Life with Eddie Murphy. That too. Yeah, Life with Eddie Murphy is great. Bernie Mac was in that one too. Solid film. I, I wish more people talked about that one. That one's hilarious. I agree, yeah. Bernie Mac transitioned into film beautifully as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chris Tucker, for sure, with Rush, oh, Rush Hour. Hour and, yeah. And all the stuff that he did in the 90s. Like mm-hmm. All of a sudden, he's in Michael Jackson videos and shit. Yeah. And he's Michael Jackson. Jackson's best friend, and everyone's like, "What the fuck?" It's crazy, but um, I would say out of these four, uh, Jamie Fox was the best at it. He was the best at it when it came to the Academy, when it came to the performances. It reminded me a lot of like when Robin Williams started out, where he was like, "Oh, he's uh, uh, the Mork and Mindy, you know, the goofy guy." But then once he hit like movies like Awakenings with De Niro, Goodwill Hunting, it reminded me like when Jamie Fox is like, "I can do more. I'm doing Ray now." Jamie I'm, Fox, I'm, right? Jamie Fox is so good at every fucking thing there is to do mm-hmm. in entertainment. Yeah, like his stand-up. If you go back and watch his old specials when he's young, is solid. Mm-hmm. He has a portion of it, of one of his stand-up specials where he brings out a piano and starts singing, wow. and the crowd just goes crazy. Like they love him. Yeah, like I couldn't imagine. Like that, sh- the, he knows how to put on a show. Yeah, uh, Jamie Fox, an absolute legend, I, and like you said, he showed that he could be a dramatic actor. Mm-hmm. It was one of those few occasions because a lot of comedians, like, they had, they could only just do comedy. They could only just do stand up. I really enjoy Chris Tucker and Martin Lawrence in those films. But again, it's like Bad Boys and Rush Hour. Those were huge films. Yeah. And it was really hard for them to, like, go beyond that. Like, I guess Martin Lawrence with Big Mama's House. But once you get to the third one, dude, it's, it's like. But oh, it's all comedy. It's all comedy. Jamie exactly. Foxx has roles like, Dramatic. like, who the hell could play Ray? Like, Ray Charles. Like, yeah, who, who could do biopic stuff like that? Exactly. None of these actors except Jamie Foxx. You're absolutely right. But I think there's something to be said about this was a tight circle of the like, Def Jam comedians. True. These guys were all friends, similar to the Joe Rogan verse. Yeah. But these guys almost all succeeded. Like the biggest yep. guys all succeeded in, in the transition to film. Where it's like nowadays, it's like flop after flop with the, That's true. the Joe Rogan verse guy. So like, what I'm I'm trying to figure out what changed there. I think it was online because you know a lot of these comedians. I'm I'm thinking about like comedians that unfortunately passed away. Like I would say 15 years ago, like um, Mitch Hedberg, Bernie Mac, Patrice O'Neill. Yeah. Imagine that those guys were on podcasts. Oh, they would God. dominate. Imagine Patrice O'Neill's podcast. Holy fuck! I would say it would it would hit higher than Joe Rogan in my opinion. It would be incredible. Yeah. I, that's my hot take. I would think Patrice O'Neill, if he had a podcast today, yeah, I think still it, would, going. Like, it would get banned off YouTube or some shit, and then oh, yeah. Spotify or something would come with like a yeah. stupid bag for him to do it only on their platform. Exactly, but he <laughs> he is far more interesting to listen to than uh, like the Two Bears One Cave or the Bad Friends. Like, oh, don't, don't get me wrong; yeah. those guys are fine in their own right. But yeah. you and I listen to comp- some of that. Yeah, but when you hear. Patrice O'Neill and Opie and Anthony. Dude, same man. Like the stories you he used to tell. <laughs> oh, fuck. The way he would talk. Uh, he has some great segments about talking about movies on that show as well. Yeah, man. Like, I would love to hear Patrice O'Neill do a podcast about film. Like, how crazy oh, would that be? It's so good. He talks about, like, Batman Begins, and he's like, that movie just 
answered all the questions. Like, what, where do you get the Batmobile from? Like, uh, Honda? Like, <laughs> how the fuck do you get the Batcave? And she loves like, Batman Begins. So good, man. So fuck. And it, it reminded me of like that type of uh, excitement that you had as a kid, I as an adult. I completely agree. Like, yeah. But um, going into uh, the 80s, though. The 80s. I would say comedians transitioning to movies in the 80s was fucking peak. Peak. Peak yeah. as, as far as the biggest stand-up comedians were in the biggest comedies yeah. of the decade. It was, it was impressive right? how it all came together. Yeah. Um, um, give an example of Pryor. Richard, Richard Pryor. Pryor. Like, Amazing comedies. Really, really solid. His work with Gene Wilder, in my opinion. What a duo. Such a great duo. It, one of my favorite duos, period, because of the work that they did. Even uh, in the weaker entries like Hear No Evil, See No Evil, compared yeah. to uh, Stir Crazy and Silver Streak, still good. Still fucking amazing. I agree. Um, and uh, my, my favorite, every time we talk about Richard Pryor, got to talk about Brewster's Millions. That's oh, yeah. my, that's my uh, sleeper. Brewster's him Millions, and, yeah. Him and uh, John Candy. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> John Candy and him, they're, they're really good together. And that's the thing, too, is like Pryor, he had a lot of hits, but even his duds, like it didn't segue him into a bad like oh he had to go back to stand up like no. no he was still doing movies man it's i yeah. doubt that burke kreischer is going to be in another fucking movie after the machine i agree <laughs> and then famously like uh rodney dangerfield you have here on this oh list. my god rodney dangerfield was made to be an entertainer made to be a uh, stand-up made to be on the big screen yeah he's what a legend right he's did like you, one of those guys did you hear about uh the stories of caddyshack where like harold ramus was directing the film right and he tried to direct Rodney, but Rodney was like, why isn't anyone laughing? It's like, Rodney, uh, we're filming. <laughs> they can't laugh or else we won't get audio of you talking. He's like, oh, it's just, I thought I bummed. He's like, you thought you, you're acting, Rodney. You can't. I heard he's a little bit of a loose cannon on set. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, during his later years, Especially people, his later years, later years uh, it was the, the bathrobe Rodney where right. he just didn't have any underwear. And he's like, hey, how's it going? He's like, oh, Jesus, Rodney, just co cover that up, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I love hearing those legendary stories. Yeah. It's like it's such a crazy time that I think won't be ever duplicated, those 80s and 90s runs. No, yeah. And uh, Richard Pryor, again, puts on fucking, in the 90s, puts on Eddie Murphy with like Harlem Knights. Oh, that was him, uh, something Fox. I think Red Fox. Red Fox, Red yeah. Fox, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy. Basically Charlie the Murphy's three, in it too. Charlie Murphy. It's it, like this generation of comedians during that time. I felt like they, yeah, they brought each, they came together. Yeah. They, they made these uh, star-studded casts. Like, that's a movie that, when you look at that cast, Red Fox, like, yeah. Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, you can never make a movie like that again. It's exactly. uh, how many legends in one film. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's something that doesn't happen today, like, all-star casts no. like they used to. I Because, I, I don't know. I, I think it's also because Eddie Murphy, this is 1989 Murphy. Yeah. This is peak. He directed this film. He wrote it. He produced it. So, of course, he's got them connections, you know? So, he was able to get actors from uh, Coming to America and yeah. bring him in this movie, and there's a lot of good roles. That's right, Arsenio Hall. Yeah, yeah, he's in it too. He's got a good, he's got a good scene, man. Hell yes, he does. Where he's like shooting the machine How gun, I and, then, Arsenio and then the guy with the mini gun. It's like, take that shit out of here, man. He's just shooting a mini pistol. Okay, Arsenio Hall should have had a bigger career on film. Yeah, he should have. I think it's because he had that uh, talk show, I, and his talk show was very famous. It was one of my dad. It was my dad's favorite late night when he yeah. was younger. So he showed me a lot of like Arsenio Hall clips and stuff. And it's a legendary show, and he was actually funny. Yeah. He wasn't just in the movie because he was Arsenio Hall. He was no. fucking hilarious in Coming to America. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, he has a great role in Home Nights. Like, yeah, man. He's a legend. He's a legend. I don't know why he wasn't as popular i i honestly think it's the talk show it overshadowed a lot of the roles that he was getting because yeah. talk shows you see a lot of those talk show people and they don't get a lot of movie roles during that time or after like i think george lopez was the same he had his own talk show and then afterwards yeah. not that many Didn't roles do much yeah but um going into stand-up uh comedians that never went back to stand up though this is a good list i would say stand-ups that never went back yeah that's interesting uh, too eddie murphy obviously yeah. the biggest he does yeah. two stand-up specials Amazing. He does Delirious and then he does Raw, like <sighs> maybe two years later or something. Yeah. And then never does a stand up special again. That's how to go, man. 
and and these are the two biggest special people. Like, <laughs> when everybody talks about Eddie Murphy in the eighties, they they talk about him walking into rooms and events like yeah. Michael Jackson just walked into the room. Exactly, like, he had that status mm-hmm. as a twenty three year old stand up comedian, like our age or younger. Yeah, exactly. It was insane. He, I think he did Delirious when he was our age. Imagine that. Imagine how insane that stadium was, and how just like confident you are you're like yeah i got this yeah let's do this for an hour you want to talk confidence i'm gonna wear a red (laughs) fucking leather outfit i'm gonna come out in all red leather god damn and i'm gonna tell guys to stop looking at my ass exactly (laughs) right away right away it's amazing and it's like wow and and that's the thing too a lot of people uh bring up the how those specials may be a bit dated but the energy is sure. not the energy is not dated sure. to me some of the jokes maybe are a bit dated a bit dated are a product of the time but yeah you understand how funny it was exactly the energy like you said the energy how excited people were to see Fuck, them man. how willing people just were to be there to laugh and have a good time yeah just every time i watch delirious i wish i was there so bad same and i don't think that usually when i watch stand-up specials I don't think, oh, I wish I was here to see this live. Mm-hmm. You know, I just laugh at the jokes or whatever. Yeah. And, and mo- most stand-up specials, I think, focus on just, you know, focus on the comedian and yeah. barely show the crowd. Mm-hmm. That's one that, like, you feel like you're in the building. Yeah. They show the warm-up with the band playing. They show really the good. jets. Oh, yeah, It man. feels like an 80s movie. It's amazing. Especially with Raw. Raw feels cinematic oh, when it Raw starts. Raw gets very cinematic as well, yeah. Love it uh, overall. But um, with Jim Carrey, though... With Jim Carrey, though. Yeah, so Eddie never comes back. And, no. And because he does these movies and those stand-up specials are so legendary, do you want him to... Do, would you ever want to... Do, would you want him to come back now? He's, no. I see him toy with the idea all the time in interviews. Yeah. He said, ah, oh, eventually I think I will. Uh, we're good. No, exactly. I think, good. I think there's no way you can top it. No. You know what would be nice, though, if he didn't do like a stand-up, but he was just like talking... Like a like Chappelle does these days, maybe. Yeah, because Chappelle kind of just kind of tells stories, and he's yeah. Chappelle's not looking for joke punch like you know set, not up, really. set up and punchline these days. Mm-hmm. Chappelle covers some deep topics, and yeah. stuff, and Netflix gives him the bag for it. I'd like to see a Absolutely. situation like that with Eddie. Yeah, same. Uh, but yeah, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Sorry, I went a little too early, but yeah. Jim Carrey is another example of one that started out as a stand-up comedian and got into some of the biggest movies in the '90s, like yeah. the biggest, and it's like. Again, it it reminds me of another person, Sandler, where it was just like it was the perfect timing for them to leave stand up, leave their shows because uh, Jim Carrey was in Living Color, yeah. and Sandler was SNL. Yes, and they both left the shows and were like, "We're gonna do movies," and the movies just so happened to be some of the biggest. But Jim, I mean, Jim Carrey is like objectively like a way better actor than a stand-up. I agree. Like we talked about it. Yeah, he's yeah. one of the Gary. best comedic actors of all time. Yeah, like he the way he even when when you go back and look at his stand-up clips, it was impression. It was characters. Mm-hmm. It was funny faces yes. and voices. He was you know he was he was an actor even when he was doing stand-up. Right. And that's and that's the thing too is like with Jim Carrey he was able to do far more distinct roles hence why we know him we know him as the Mask we know him as Dumb and Dumber we know him even in serious roles like Eternal Sunshine yes all different whereas with Sandler he was known as the the average Joe yeah that's I, why people loved him that's why they made money I agree with I think Jim Carrey was always an actor that was so funny. Mm-hmm. That he could do comedy, he could do stand up as well. Yes. Whereas Eddie, I think, came up as a traditional stand up and was so funny as a stand up that he could act as well. And he had that swagger with him that he yeah. could carry on to the big screen. But Jim, to me, was always an actor. Yeah. Sandler, I think, also kind of always, he had always actor energy in him. Yeah, actor energy. Even with SNL, like the characters that he was doing were very much like. Everyday people. Yes. You do everyday people, relatability, you get more money that way in the box office, which hence why like he w- he's still doing really well in terms of like box office, I would say. Not critically, but with the comedies, but still. Yeah, and now we're finally seeing Sandler show like I could do something else too. We're seeing yeah. him step into that um, Jamie Foxx bag as we talked about mm-hmm. where he's doing the serious roles. He's doing the uncut gems. He's, That's true. He's doing that kind of stuff, which I love to see. Really, really good stuff. Um, and going into Robin Williams territory, I mean, like, what, what more can you say about Robin Williams, man? What like, a legend. <laughs> what like, a legend. Like, his stand-up was so clever as well. Yeah. He's so well-written. Like, the man knows how to write a joke. The man knows how to perform. The man knows how to act. Yeah, dude. Like, I saw his 2002 special. 
um, yes, somewhere in Broadway. Yeah. Holy fuck, man. If you want to know how much energy Robin Williams gives to the people, he's got like 20 water bottles on a fucking table. It's an exhausting special. <laughs> Holy shit. And it's like he fires like 10 jokes a minute. 10 yeah. jokes a second. Fuck that. No, he's like on it, on yeah. it. And I'm like, it's co- cocaine energy. Eh? Literally. <laughs> yeah, really no, is. literally. And he was older already. Like he's, He was in his 50s, I think. not a young Robin Williams. Yeah. That's a great special. Really solid. But again, like my favorite, one of my favorite films of all time, Goodwill Hunting. He gives, he he gives a powerful his, performance. Showed his dramatic side and it mm-hmm. worked extremely well. Yeah. He's an actor who's, yeah, who was definitely capable of that. R.I.P. the GOAT, Robin Williams. R.I.P. man. Exactly. Um, this one was the biggest curveball I've seen on this list because I had no idea he did stand up. Michael Keaton. Yeah, it was early stand up. Nothing, nothing too memorable to be honest with you. Yeah. Like you said, it was like, was it like the Jerry Seinfeld? Like, like he had a Jerry Seinfeld he like, haircut. He's yeah. on there like, what's the deal with airplanes? And stuff? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> he talks about it uh, back when Norm Macdonald had um, his show on Netflix. Oh, he okay. interviewed Keaton on his early stand up, and uh, yeah, he's far from those days, man. He is, he is now like. Although he has been in comedic roles, like Beetlejuice is very comedic, yeah. uh, Mr. Mom, like 80s films are there. Yeah. And then probably around the 90s and 2000s, he had a little bit more of a resurgence. I would say Birdman is when he was officially like, oh, yeah, Oscar, like you're in. Right. That's crazy to think that like stand-up comedian was Batman. Yeah, man. Right? That's you never really yeah, expect man. that. <laughs> well, that's Guy why who has origins in stand up became Batman. Yeah, because it's like that's why people were like Michael Keaton and Batman when he first got announced. Like, what, Mister Mom? Right, the American goofy dad. Fuck that. And then it's like, no, nah, man, he's good. He's, he's really good. He's great. He's iconic, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, and he he went on to have great roles even after Batman as well. Like, yeah, I love him in Jackie Brown. He's fantastic. Oh Jackie yeah, Brown. He's such Holy an underrated shit, role, man. Classic classics. Um, okay, let's do some some modern comedians in movies. What do you think the best example of a modern stand up turn actor is? You know what I I think in this day and age, like there have been so many attempts of comedians with their podcast trying to break out in film. But the more I think about uh, her roles in, in movies, I'm more impressed because she did that transition from stand-up to movies and in a good way. And that would be Sarah Silverman. Yeah. She, Nobody brings up the fact that she was in like... She's a great voice actor, Wreck-It Ralph. She was, in, she was great in that. And true. she's also great in maestro and smaller roles too. She's not doing the big films, but she's doing films that... Uh, challenge her yeah she's getting lost in these characters yes like you could easily watch maestro and not even realize it's sarah silverman exactly because i didn't in the beginning (laughs) so (laughs) right and if and if any of these comedians want to attempt that which i'm gonna be honest like i i guess the best one would be like a kevin hart yeah go for the more dramatic roles kevin hart do not do hey i'm i'm the goofy short black man wow like we're we're done with those days man i know you're done with those specials go into it seriously he has some of those roles that i like like i like kevin harden 40 old virgin and like some of the yeah like but those are small yeah yeah. but some of the netflix stuff he's doing now where he's just playing kevin hart yeah it's it's tough for me it's it's tough for me exactly that's what i mean like if kevin hart wants to go beyond the stand-up comedian actor he's got to pick better roles yeah way better because he's a good actor that's the thing people forget is like if given the right material a lot of these people are really good in these roles i think kevin hart really has it in him i really mm-hmm. do think he is a good actor mm-hmm. i just think he picks bad roles yeah he picks roles where he just has to be himself and that gets annoying exactly um but yeah those are my two modern comedies that i feel like should get more spotlight if anything compared to like again like what bobby lee what what movies has he been yeah he's like a kind of classic <laughs> side character yeah you know one that i want to mention is mm-hmm. not not really on the big screen but he had a show on fx louis louis ck louis ck yeah had the famous show louis on fx mm-hmm. have you ever seen that show hilarious it's so well done probably one of my favorite like it's such it's one of the best written comedic shows i completely I've agree seen. it's yeah. it's kind of a masterpiece at times yeah uh, certain seasons i feel like are masterful and uh yeah he some some of these guys make good transitions into shows and sitcoms and stuff but louis i think is like some of the high one of the highest level examples of that like yeah shows that his joke writing is so good that he can write a show yeah he can write a show and personally like i'm gonna be honest his transition into directing his own films as well because he's a director too yes I fuck with that man. Like, I, I it reminds me of like um, 
I think it's because he lives in New York, that aesthetic of like Woody Allen films in the 70s. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. I, think that's what I, he grew I up really on. like that. I think that's what he grew up on. That's yeah. what he was inspired by. And I think that's what he makes now. And it's, it's dope. Mm-hmm. I really respect that. He stands out from a lot of comedians because of those features. Um, but you know what? Uh, let's get into the top five comedians because we brought up a lot of comedians, yeah. both modern, old. But what are our favorites? Top five stand-ups of all time. Yeah. Hard list to make. I know. Um, do you want to go first? I'll go first. All right. Let's hear it. My top five, in no particular order. Dave Chappelle. Mm-hmm. I think Dave Chappelle stood the test of time. Yeah, Undisputed man. legend. Yeah. Uh, Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. Those first two special. I know he only has two. But it's great. Like, it's like Biggie. He only has got two <laughs> albums. <laughs> yeah, man. But he's the best fucking rapper of all time. <laughs> there you because go. Because they're that good, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Louis C.K. I have on this list. I think his specials, man, are just genuinely so funny to me. Yes. There's some controversy or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But his objectively, his comedy, his specials, his like shock comedy that he does, mm-hmm. he does it in the absolute best way. He's a legend yes. to me. Mm-hmm. Richard Pryor, live on Sunset Strip, I think yeah. objectively is one of the best specials ever fucking made. Because he's this is a man that's kind of falling apart. And just talking about it on stage, yeah, and in an open, honest way, like, yeah, I lit myself on fire, and I right. was doing this coke, and yeah, and I've never seen anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's amazing, really impressive. And number five is Patrice O'Neill, Elephant in the Room. Elephant man. in the Room. Is that's a- all you got to see, man. That's that's probably your favorite comedian's favorite comedian, yes. and that's for a good reason. All the comedians say Patrice O'Neill's in their top five. And for good reason, because he's one of the best to ever do it. He's amazing. And he never got to the height of his fame because he didn't want to pander to the Hollywood yeah. uh, way, I think. If he wanted to be Kevin Hart, he could have been bigger than Kevin Hart. Oh, absolutely. He even makes fun of it, man. He's like, dude, I've gotten the roles that Craig Robinson took. And you know what? <laughs> I said, fuck it, man. I, every time I see Craig Robinson, I'm like, that script they fucking gave me, and I said no to it, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, but um, fully respect that list. All great comedians. Uh, my top five is a little bit different. I'll go from... Uh, yeah, no particular order. I'll yeah. be honest. So Eddie Murphy, love it. Yeah. Like Delirious Raw, quoted every day. Yeah. Robin Williams, his fucking energy will never be topped. I agree. It will never be topped. Patrice O'Neill, like we said, Elephant in the Room, Opie and Anthony, like even his interviews on Jimmy Fallon and and those talk shows have way more energy than talk shows now. Amazing. He, you know, rest in peace um, to both Patrice and Robin, and also rest in peace to Norm Macdonald. Man, rest Dude, in peace, Norm too. Norm Macdonald, his style, his attitude on humor works so well, not only on SNL, but even smaller roles in movies. He was a great actor in those movies because yeah. of the fact that they knew how to cast him. Yeah, he was such an... Uh, the way he told jokes was so out of the box, different. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, man. But it's just he had this charm to him. He's so likable, so funny. Yeah. I love Norm. And if there's one movie to watch with him, Dave Chappelle, and Danny DeVito, it's called... Uh, uh, I think it's called Wrecked. I've never seen that. I believe it's called that. Um, if I'm not right... I'm going to put the picture down or whatever. Yeah. But anyways, great movie if you want to see all of them in comedic roles. And in my opinion, my favorite comedian of all time, I'm putting this one on. I don't care. Rodney Dangerfield. No respect. No respect. I got no respect. About because of the fact that as a kid, I laughed at him with his attitude, with how he looked. Right. And as an older, you know, I'm older now and I'm watching him and it's still the energy, man. It's still funny. I, it's still funny. It's very much a product of the times yes. and, and can feel a little corny at times. Yeah. But objectively, it's fucking hilarious. It's you so know, good. Yeah. Like every time he was on Johnny Carson, he would have to take up 20 minutes of the showtime. And then every time Johnny's like, so Rodney, how are you doing? He's like, oh, we're doing the stuff. We're doing the talking now. <laughs> so well, I guess I'll answer some questions. So yeah, those are my picks. That's a comedian that cannot be duplicated. No. Rodney Dangerfield is one of one. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that list and I like this conversation. Um, let us know your favorite um, stand-up comedians turned actors. Why did I say actors like actors. that? Actors. I'm not sure why. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> actors. And with that, uh, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe to your boys. Check us out on that Patreon, them YouTube memberships. We're cooking over there. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. I just said that. I'm saying it again. Hell yeah. Take care. Brush your hair. I'm struggling through the end. All good. Peace out, y'all. <laughs> Woo! No respect.